Happy Sunday, beautiful patrons. As always, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your love and your support. Please feel free to share any clips or any page views that uh, we could get on your behalf would be absolutely greatly appreciated. By the way, if there's anyone out there who's a gamer and would like to play uh, with Paul, please reach out to us and we'll gladly set up a time and then you'll end up in a video. So, very quickly, what I would like to address um, is this idea of suffering for Christ's sake. Now, let me back up and lay a very quick foundation. If you know anything about me, then you know that I do not claim to have lost my faith. I understand that phrase, and I understand the concept behind that phrase, and I appreciate everyone who uses it, in particular those who have made it a part of the lexicon of our generation. But what I prefer to say instead is that I graduated from my faith. It's one of the reasons I was so thrilled with holding the title of the first graduate of the clergy project. We only stopped using uh, that title whenever it became confusing to some people and whenever our naysayers began to try to use it against us, as if somehow Dan Barker and Richard Dawkins and Daniel Dennett and Linda Lascola had created some type of curriculum by which uh, well-meaning and fully faithful ministers were being deconverted. That wasn't the case. You know it wasn't the case. But nevertheless, we stopped using that particular phrase. But I'm still very proud to be the first graduate of the clergy project because I did not lose my faith. I graduated from my religion. Now, as always, dealing with transition, I try to, I try to discover, uncover, and work our way through the different residual elements that um, religion uses to hang on to us as we transition into a secular philosophy. And an important part of this is the suffering for Christ's sake. Obviously, when we no longer believe, we no longer feel obligated to suffer for Christ's sake. But I think we're still oftentimes still in the habit of suffering. So what I want to tell you right now is, is that even though through your transition, there's a lot of pain. The pain is not only felt by you, it may be felt by your spouse, it may be felt by your loved ones, it may be felt by the ministry that felt responsible for your faith, it may be felt by your fellow church members, extended family. Your whole world obviously can be affected by your transition. I want you to understand very clearly that it is not being disrespectful to them to let it go. To be able to let go of the pain and to move forward, you do not have to live a muted life, a dampered life, in order to be respectful to the pain that people are feeling because of your transition. That's just not an obligation that you bear now in this new life in which you have moved into. On top of that, it's okay for you to enjoy your life. Enjoying your life is not dishonoring the memories of other people or dishonoring the memories of, of your previous life. And, and it's not dishonoring the memories or the appreciation that you show for the people in your previous life. It is okay for you to enjoy yourself on a somewhat a somewhat slight tangent. My clearest example of that is if you know my story, then you know that I had an incident where I attempted to give CPR to my grandfather, but it wasn't effective, and more than likely I wasn't doing it anywhere close to right, and he died. And so I've struggled for years to feel as if I have the right to enjoy myself because he's gone and in some ways I feel as if I contributed to him no longer being with us. This is a crazy mind game that we have to play and work our way through because once again to reiterate enjoying your life, letting go of the pain of your past is not disrespecting anyone from your past. It is not dishonoring a memory from your past. This suffering for Christ's sake in many ways can translate or, or mutate itself into our new life in a form of survival guilt or survivor guilt. Because we have graduated, because we survived, we escaped, we are now free when so many other people are still in bondage and are still captives to superstition, it is easy to feel as if maybe we should not be 
or do not have the right to be completely enjoying our lives. But what we need to do is we need to learn from our past experiences, understand them, appreciate them, grow through them, unravel them, completely unknot those circumstances and learn everything that there is to learn about ourselves from those situations so that we can then share it with other people and help other people's lives, help other people survive and move out of survival guilt. And so with this, we learn... We learn from our past, and then we let it go. We let go of the negative emotions. We give ourselves permission to move forward in our lives. We embrace the process, and we embrace the progress of our lives. Over and over again, we are called upon to be courageous, to be sincere, to be daring, to be brave. This is what you're doing. And by being brave, you are literally changing not just your future, but the future of everyone around you. Your voice will echo throughout all of the corridors of the tomorrows that are to come. That voice will carry a truth, an integrity, an example, an encouragement for the generations to come. It's okay to enjoy your life. It's okay to be brave. It's okay to be the real you.